welcome to GemChem. Now today's video is on Chemical Thermodynamics Part 14 video and here we are going to deal with the principles of refrigerator. Now before starting, already 13 videos are uploaded in channel, you can watch it. I will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video. And if you are new to GemChem, do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates. Now in the refrigerator, the way of arrangement is just the opposite as that of a Carnot engine. If you remember, we had a sum where we had to prove the equivalence between Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statement. There we had used a refrigerator. So this is our high temperature reservoir with a temperature of T2 and this is our source. Similarly, the down portion is our low temperature reservoir with a temperature of T1 and this is our sink and here we have the refrigerator R which will do the work or take up the work. In this case, it is going to take up the work that is W will be taken. First, it will take up heat of Q1 from low temperature reservoir and a work will be performed to dump up a heat of Q2 which is equals to Q1 plus W. Now here we will not derive any efficiency function but we will derive coefficient of performance. Coefficient of performance and it is just the opposite of efficiency which we have seen. This is equals to Q by W and here Q is Q1. Now if you try to draw the Carnot cycle for this case we are going to draw for refrigerator. So we have a curve like this which is A to B and this denotes pressure of P1 V1 volume P2 V2. Similarly for the next step we have this graph. So this is C with pressure P3 and volume V3. Next we will go for compression. So it is point D. So we are having P4 V4. And then we are going to join these two and ultimately get our graph. Now, since the cycle is moving in the opposite direction, so the arrow will be also in the opposite directions. And here, remember, we are taking up heat from this part. And the heat taken up is Q1, whereas the heat is being absorbed by the high temperature reservoir, so it is Q2 and this is a graph of P versus V. Q1 is the amount of heat taken from sink and Q2 is the amount of heat transferred to the source. Next, if you try to write down for few steps, then for BA suppose, which is isothermal compression. W1 comes to be as minus nRT2 ln V1 by V2. Again, delta U1 equals to 0 and Q2 comes to be as nRT2 ln V1 by V2. For AD, suppose if you consider which is adiabatic expansion, Q must be equal to 0 and delta U1 comes to be as N C V T1 minus T2 and W2 comes to be as N C V T1 minus T2. Just as we have seen for Carnot cycle, just determine the initial and the final steps. So what is the coefficient of performance here? Your coefficient of performance is given by this symbol J which is equals to Q1 by W and here what we get is T1 by T2 
minus T1. This is our coefficient of performance for a refrigerator. Just like efficiency, it is just the reverse. Coefficient of performance for refrigerator. And here ends the topic of refrigerator and the second law of thermodynamics was up to this portion which it was applicable for. Next part of chemical thermodynamics we need to deal with free energy functions and third law of thermodynamics. Reference book for this particular topic chemical thermodynamics is provided in the telegram channel with the PDF. You can download it from here and a checkpoint, checkpoint sheet more specifically in the description box so you can check it out and solve the questions. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.